Hello, this is Dr. Victoria Skirbo. I'm speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And um, I'd like to talk to you in this series of uh, short videos about some of my insights around the year 2017. I'm going to share some of my insights and how I uh, come to these insights um, because you also can um, learn something from my process, I believe. And so uh, let's talk about it. So 2017 is, is upon us. And if you're looking at this later in uh, the year, you know that you're in the midst of it now. Or if you're looking at this um, as a reference to what has happened, uh, you can see um, if what I'm saying has any validity um, as it, you know from what you're seeing happening in the year so so right now it's December of 2016 and um, and we're and it's close coming up coming up quickly and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the numerology of the year 2017 now when we look at a year uh, numerologically we look at it as a vibration uh, or a universal year vibration so every year um, as the year changes to the next year has a universal uh, uh, vibration now this um, is the year that most people use uh, but of course not everybody on the planet uses this calendar so uh, this really is um, more attuned to the people who use the calendar that we're talking about and so um, we're talking about um, how most people are experiencing I would say this year of 2017 now we take the number two uh, two zero one and seven and we add it up and we come to a one vibration or a ten one vibration because two and zero and one and seven is ten now the type of numerology that I use I do um, use numbers beyond uh, um, I use my numbers go from 0 to uh, 78 so they all have significance in the type of numerology that I do the type of numerology that I practice is based um, on the numeral 0 through 9 and it is based on a um, a uh, Western occult tradition. So we have the 10-1 year and when we're in a one year the thing that is most important is intention and focus and so in 2017 it really does matter uh, what you choose to focus on. Now I just want to show you a little um, a little thing here that I did. Let me pull it over. We'll go into more depth with all of this. Let me see. Can you see it? Oh, hold on one second. Hopefully you can see it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, hopefully this is good for you. Okay. So uh, we're in. Uh, we're talking about the universal year. Universal years come in nine-year cycles. 2007, we go into a one-year, and then we progress from that and go through uh, the next nine years to the nine year cycle. But what I want you to understand about this diagram is that the first uh, four years of the cycle is an involution cycle. Something new is coming in. We're involuting. Uh, something, say, from spirit is being um, seeded into um, the, onto the planet. In the fifth year, which in this case is 2021, we come to the five vibration. At the five vibration, we make a choice, okay? And then we start moving up, and this is the evolution. Involution, choice, evolution, okay? So that is, there's some, uh, some truths in this particular uh, diagram. Now let's talk about the 10-1 year, if we could. Okay, I am back. <laughs> that I practice, I um, include the the tarot, the tarot cards, with um, the way I evaluate the vibration, and the ten one vibration is associated with this tarot card right here. Okay, this is the wheel of fortune. 
Okay. Now the Wheel of Fortune card is one in which we see the wheel and in this particular deck we see that there is a sphinx on top, there is a symbol of Anubis, and there's also a snake there around the circle. And in the corners of this card we have the four fixed signs of the zodiac. We have Scorpio as the eagle, we have Leo as the lion, Taurus as the bull, and Aquarius as the man. The, the, the um, fixed signs of the zodiac are connected to uh, the four um, gospels, um, the four um, uh, the the, the uh, tetragrammaton. Um, so it is, um, and, and the, the 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 fixed signs of the zodiac in astrology are associated with uh, the soul. So uh, we're talking here about soul, uh, soul incarnation and evolution. So the ten one vibration is really about staying centered, because um, it kind of reminds me of back in the day when uh, I was young and I grew up in the city. I grew up in uh, actually Jersey City, uh, which is right outside of New York City. Very very uh, industrial, an industrial um, center, uh, somewhat depressed when I was growing up. But um, we had a, um, we would go to the, to the park, uh, we would go to the, um, uh, the, the, oh God, the playground, and we had a merry-go-round there. It's not the kind of merry-go-round you have with horses or anything, but it was this, um, sort of rotating ride that you would get on and somebody would push or a couple of people would push and then you would hang on for dear life and the further out you were the more this the uh, centrifugal force would like pull you and so you'd feel the force of it you'd have to hold on really really tight but if you were able to sort of like climb into the center of it you would be sitting in the center and the only thing you would be experiencing really is the turning around. You wouldn't feel the force. And so when we're dealing with this card, with this Wheel of Fortune, it is important that we focus our attention here to the center and become the observer of what is going around and around. This is a, a card associated with a change in fortune. Um, sometimes when I do card readings, I, I look at this and I say the mighty will fall and the meek shall rise. And so there is a shift and a change. So that in itself is symbolic of what we will experience in, in 2017. We will see a changing of the energy, a changing of the guards. The last time we were in a 10 year was 2008. And there was a big shift and a big change, at least in our country, in America, United States of America, when we had our first black president um, elected. That was a big shift as far as the cultural, the cultural milieu. Um, so we're going to have another big shift. The sign what's especially significant about this point in our history and in our cultural experience and our collective experience is that we have just come off of a number of years of super transformational energies with Pluto and Uranus making seven exact squares to each other. The last time Pluto and Uranus came were in a stressful relationship with each other like this was the conjunction back in 1965 and 1966 and we know what the 60s were like we saw the the revolution and the transformation well that we have the same uh, two uh, people the two uh, forces working but now they are working in a crisis and action square to each other so those squares occurred between 2012 which was a five year incidentally and 2017 um, 15 which was a uh, an eight year so we had a, a giant um, a, a explosion, really, and, and cultural shift and initiations where many people's lives were just sort of like totally blown apart. Part of the reason for that is because these two 
powerhouses were in cardinal signs and cardinal is about initiating something new and so we're initiating something new now this past year 2000 and um, 16 was a nine year a nine year is is really about a purification process it's about a deciding what is a value from the last nine years and and taking that seed to plant in the one year and then everything else needs to go by the wayside well we had a huge shift in 2016 and this was of course in part due to uh, what occurred in the years before but there was a specific aspect to this year that occurred and that was a square between Neptune which is the planet of dissolution and and um, Saturn which is the pa the um, planet of boundaries and it was in a square to each other a crisis in consciousness square we were all going through spiritual crisis we're all going through a process of uh, looking to see that those perhaps in charge did not had a deaf ear to us and they weren't seeing what we were seeing they weren't feeling what we were feeling and so really there was a, a revolution but the revolution is one of breaking from uh, the constraints of the consensus or or the constraints of those in power that's also part of the the journey with Pluto in Capricorn which incidentally Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008 in that one year so the last nine years 2008 to 2016 has had Pluto in Capricorn and we will continue to have Pluto in Capricorn through the next um, nine years although not the entire time I believe and I will check this and let you know the next time I uh, on the next video that actually it's two I think it's 2024 when Pluto moves into Aquarius and so uh, and there's a lot of things happening in these years which I will talk about gradually not to overwhelm anybody so what I want you to take from this particular um, video is that we are moving into a 10-1 year associated with this card this is about intention and focus so if there's one thing I want you to take away from this is that you need to focus <coughs> excuse me you need to focus on what you want to create you do not want to focus on what you don't so if you want to create peace and love and harmony that is what you need to focus on as we move through this one year and I will tell you it is going to be challenging but if we stay in the center of the wheel and not get caught on the out, outskirts of the wheel it's kind of like um, when you're in a hurricane the safest place is in the eye of the storm where if you look up it's you see beautiful blue skies it's at the edges and the periphery that most of the destruction destruction happens so if you are at the edge of yourself you will see the destruction if you can say centered if you can say centered within yourself you're doing the right thing for yourself. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.